Sue, would you do the roll call, please? Here. Jonathan Ramsey. Ken Demers. Here. Robert DeSina. Here. Jeffrey Desmaris. Here. Anthony DeBona. Here. Luce Raza. Robert Retallick. Here. And Rachel Ryan. Here. Move on to public comment. I only see two members of the public. Would you like to address us, please? I take this off when I talk. Al Mickle, 95 Woodvine Avenue. I have in front of me the Town of Watertown org chart. Um, it's, it's a terrific document. Uh, I waited for it a long time, but it was worth it. Um, whoever figured out how to put this together did a remarkably good job, and I would recommend that she... Uh, she gets, listen, I probably know who it is anyway, gets a recommendation for a, a, a job well done. I do have some um, observations. Uh, the first one is uh, the voters box on the top is way too small. It should be much larger. <laughs> and usually documents should be dated because this might change, probably not in the near future, but it's always good to know what date it was valid to. So there's the only two comments I have, but it was an outstanding job. Now, now another comment I wanna um, praise. Uh, there was an accident on Woodvine Avenue yesterday. Two cars hit head on. I don't know how they managed it, but uh, I don't think anybody was seriously hurt. But the response from the police department, the fire department, the ambulances, the tow trucks was outstanding. They did a very professional job. And I got to uh, watch the jaws of life work. And it was rather impressive. So kudos to them also. Now, on the agenda tonight is the dog park. It's been hanging around for a long time. I'm just wondering, is there any anticipated cost in maintaining a dog park? Hopefully very little. Uh, but I don't know if it's been planned for, and I'll, I'll wait for the budget to see if any maintenance is required for the dog park. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Catherine, did you wish to speak to us? <clears throat> Catherine Camera, 31 Cottage Place in Oakville. Um, I was at Unico Field watching a soccer game on Saturday with my sister, my mother, my niece, and brother-in-law. When at 3.02 p.m., I got an email from a resident on Linkfield Road. At the same time, my family members were asking, where is that music coming from? The email said, Hawk Ridge just started up. It's awfully loud. Yes, I would guess since I heard it at Unico, which was 3.9 miles away, almost on the border of Oakville. First was Tom Petty's, You Wreck Me, followed by Bob Seeger, Against the Wind, and then Social Distortion, Ball and Chain. I love music, but I would not be happy to have it blaring me out of my home. It's been a year since residents came to the council asking for help with the unmanageable noise they endure weekend after weekend. I've heard the argument that music isn't noise. Well, it is when you didn't turn it on and you can't turn it off. The public hearing in July was a disgrace for the council. Asking for the public's comments on our current noise ordinance turned into, don't stop the parties at Hawk Ridge and Sunset Grill, don't destroy the businesses. It was just an argument of concerned residents and town partiers with no control over content. Even people from Wolcott were allowed to speak praises of the winery. Those businesses were doing fine before COVID, and now they are just party venues with loud music. A recent Sunset Grill post for an event actually asked people not to bring alcohol. Yes, 
People bring in their own alcohol, just like concert venues. At the winery, it's really easy because they bring picnic baskets with all sorts of goodies inside. Is it even really a winery anymore? To Mr. DeBona, Mr. Desmaris, and the other members of the Ordinance Subcommittee. Sorry if you don't want to pay attention to me right now, Mr. DeBona, but I am speaking directly to you <clears throat> through the chair. Have the decency to show, some of the to show up to some of the residences while the music is playing. You may well not even hold a meeting if you don't, because you can't possibly make any decisions that are the best for the whole community. Go to 284 Ledgewood Road and just park between those two houses during an event without any advance notice to the winery. Just do that for the residents before you start writing your ordinance. And get behind the science of noise. I'm certain that there were people along that 3.9 mile stretch from the winery to Unico Field that didn't hear anything because there are many factors in play to measure noise. Either the town or the venues need to hire a sound engineer for an opinion. It should not be put on the residents since they were living comfortably in their homes before this flawed permitting process started. And just before I left tonight, I got an email. The New Haven Register reported today two arrests for noise at Long Wharf for disturbing the peace. Boom cars with mega speakers. The noise carries all the way across the water to Brantford. It was quoted, the noise is dis disruptive and disrespectful. Residents deserve a high quality of life, said the mayor of a city. A city where people expect some level of noise. They're in a city. Not like when they're in the countryside of Watertown. I'm really upset about this, obviously, because I was here a year ago when these people came here, and it's only gotten worse. And the volume keeps getting louder and louder, and the alcohol bringing in, being brought into a winery that's only supposed to have beer and wine. You know, you guys might not believe this, but I happen to know people are bringing it in in their little picnic baskets. It's getting out of control up there. Moving on to um, something else. When you cover your business this evening, I would like to know who you chose to pay the $9,500 for a safety improvement concept plan for Main Street and how you determined who it would be and, and why that's being done. Because as I understood it, we already went through a plan with the state of Connecticut, much of which has not been implemented yet. So I'm not really sure I understand what, what that's about. So I would really like to hear something on that since you're here tonight. I wouldn't have to do an email. We could actually hear about it tonight. I'd also like to understand why we need almost $30,000 in repairs to the animal shelter. It, it, I, I don't know if that was budgeted or if something actually happened there. It's a lot of money. Maybe that was already in the budget or, or did something actually happen there during one of the storms. So I would hope to hear about that because as um, some of you who are at the FOI seminar, Tom Hennick mentioned the political parties should not come to the dais and just vote. We should be hearing discussion or debate. Otherwise, it looks to us members of the public as if everyone was called in to vote ahead of time. So I hope to hear more discussion going forward. Thank you. Thank you. We need a motion for the regular meeting minutes. Motion to accept the regular meeting minutes of September 20th, 2021. Is there a second? second? Are there any corrections or additions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. It, is anyone abstaining? I'm abstaining. Mr. DeBono is abstaining. Motion passes. Under the chair's comments, we have the resignation letter from Jamie Russ as a member of the Watertown Police Commission, and it's attached to the agenda. Moving on to the town manager's report. Good evening, honorable chairwoman and members of the Watertown Town Council. I'd just like to advise you that uh, our pilot monies, uh, payment in lieu of taxes, 
I would like to thank Joe Seacrest for initiating the conversation surrounding the I'm looking for my glasses. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's tough okay. to get old. <laughs> I'd like to thank Joe C. Chris for initiating the conversation surrounding the pilot monies for the bus depot and Representative Joe Paletta for following through and querying the state. Subsequently, we received uh, this month $301,915 uh, this month, and we anticipate an additional approximately $90,000 for our current fiscal year. And that would be for the two properties, the bus depot and Black Rock State Park. So total that we can expect moving forward is approximately $409,000, and that is as long as the state uh, funds that program. The Town of Watertown has been acknowledged by the Government Finance Officers Association, a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020, was awarded to our Finance Director, Suzette Pohm. I'd like to thank her and her staff for their efforts, which have put Watertown in the position to receive such an award. Thank you. Great job. Uh, our FOIA training was very successful. Uh, we had that on September 22nd. There was 27 attendees. Uh, I received a lot of good feedback from a lot of the attendees. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Hennick for doing the training. Uh, I've scheduled a Roberts Rules and FOIA integration training with Pullman and Comley. Uh, that will be October 26, 2021 at 630 in this uh, chambers. Our Steelbook Greenway requests for quotes have been out. They, we've received them. Our committee has reviewed them. And we're in the position now to uh, request that those parties come in for an interview for us to move forward with those architectural designs on the Steelbrook Greenway. Another reminder that CCM convention is currently scheduled for November 30th and December 1st. White Collar Union tentative agreement has been offered, as I said last meeting. Uh, we're still waiting for a response and communications. Uh, we're still in ongoing discussions. Finally, our new public director works, Louis J. Spina Jr., uh, will be starting October 18th, 2021. And I can't say that I'm I'm very happy he's coming in. Uh, he will be in on the 13th. He'll come in for a short tour and just to meet some of the staff prior to his arrival on the 18th. Uh, just, this is just for um, future information, our cybersecurity and information technology. I've had preliminary discussions with our insurance carrier regarding cybersecurity and its effect on our insurance and our ability to maintain insurance for cybersecurity moving forward. Um, Mike Simmons, our IT uh, department head has also had discussions with the insurance carrier. We're taking care of some mitigating techniques to provide better cybersecurity to be in line with what the insurance company's expectations are for us. He's going to do the best he can, but a lot of these, uh, a lot of this criteria was after the, we applied for the budget. So we may have to ask for more money to implement some of these uh, techniques to provide better uh, cybersecurity. In front of you is the new organizational chart, the one that was put in the packet this morning. I was reviewing it, and I noticed that I left off our municipal agent. So the one that was placed in front of you is the actual chart that we, I'm going to ask that you adopt this evening. Uh, do you want me to go through the changes just so you're up to par? Sure. Okay. So if you look at that chart on, on the second line, we moved the town clerk. That was moved down to where it should be appropriately. The jury committee, that position was removed. We no longer um, have that type of committee. The redevelopment agency was removed. It is part of our ordinances. So as we move forward with, with our ordinance um, restructuring, we'll repeal that. The town clerk has been added to line six as a department head. Our building official was removed from the department head and reflects the position that it is now underneath our planning and zoning department head. Uh, Director of Civil, Civil Defense, that's been changed to Emergency Management Coordinator, who is Dave Bromley, the Fire Chief. Uh, Water and Sewer Superintendent was moved uh, to a department head and removed from underneath the uh, Public Works Director, or Public Works Department head. 
uh, data processing was just renamed to information uh, technology. So those are the changes in the, in the re readjustment. Uh, the Watertown Police Department is offering two sessions for the Junior Police Academy. Session one starts October 6th, and session two will begin November 17th. Each, each session will expose students to the inner workings of the police, of police work, and it will be spread out over six weeks. Uh, I'd like to thank the chief for initiating this. It's a great program for Watertown. Website, uh, documents on demand is tentatively scheduled to upload on uh, October 11th, so we're expecting that the majority of our documents will be uploaded. We are gonna be capped for board and commission agendas and minutes to only the year 2015. All those documents will still be available through the town clerk, but um, easily, easily accessed on the website will not go beyond 2015. Town council agendas and minutes uh, will uh, have been restored to 2009, and we anticipate that we'll be able to get back to 2005. Uh, we did recover more agendas and minutes, but the um, the task of converting them over to post them is it's labor intensive. I think it'd be best for us to limit it at the, that 2015 and uh, hopefully 2005 for the council. And that's my re report for the evening. Would you uh, advise the council members uh, with regard to what I asked you prior to the meeting? I asked you about our bat situation. Yes. Uh, would you tell them what you told me, please? Yes. So we did go out and uh, seek other bids for the job. We have one other uh, in our, um, bid that came in at 38000 and we have another one at 4000 So they all similarly look... Well, they all look similar. So we are going to probably go with the lesser amount. Um, they'll eradicate the bats. Uh, they will not harm the bats. They will um, install some type of bat door, which allows the bats to fly out and not return. They will then go and clean up whatever messes that needs to be cleaned up, and they will search the uh, upstairs area to make sure that uh, we are bat tight and we won't allow for any more bats to enter. Um, the company's out of New Milford, and we're just double-checking to make sure that that company's reputable before we ask them to do the job. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I thought the council needed to hear the difference in, yes. in price quotes. Uh, we'll move on to new business. I move to add to the agenda to be discussed as the first new business item, discussion regarding flooding in the area, 237 Ball Farm Road, and the surrounding properties. Do we have a second to add the item to the agenda? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. It is now the first item on the agenda, and uh, we will ask Attorney Jessel to address the council. <clears throat> Am I on? You're on. Perfect. Um, so the, the flooding that occurred uh, at Ball Farm Road, Buckingham Street, uh, through Ordinary Joe's and through Sunnyside Avenue um, isn't necessarily new. Uh, last time this issue came up was 2015. And I did a lot of study of that issue with uh, then town engineer Chuck Berger and then Public Works Director Roy Cavanaugh. Uh, there, are, there, there is a brook that runs behind those built, uh, houses that a prior owner of all that land piped behind the last two or three houses and under Ordinary Joe's. So there's actually a pipe under the Ordinary Joe's building. Um, in 2015, they had flooding there. It was determined that the pipe needed repair, and the owners were told it's not a, it's not a town pipe. The town did not install that pipe. Uh, the only town impact on that whatsoever is a very small um, easement 
into that river, a six inch pipe, and then a pipe to the west of that pipe that's a water and sewer pipe that takes water away. Um, those are no longer used because the property to the west of those properties has been developed. The town manager had asked me, how do we, how do we repair this problem? And it's, it's a vexing issue, obviously. The problem is that if the town of Watertown undertakes to fix this problem, we own this problem. And it's not a problem of the town of Watertown's making. So it becomes a very serious issue. Uh, if we wanna try to do something there, I, I'm just at odds at how we go about doing that. If there are questions, I mean, that's really all I have. So let me understand what you're saying. You're saying that the town had no responsibility for the installation of the pipe that has now clogged and is causing this backup? That's correct. And in and 2015, it was essentially the same issue. And uh, the town engineer and the public works director informed the residents at that time that they should go in and get that pipe cleaned out. I remember that from a public works meeting. Right. Um, it's a, it's a, listen, it's a very serious issue. It's very um, problematic. Um, my concern is for the town of Watertown and not owning this problem, particularly given the fact that there's a pipe under the ordinary Joe's building. So if we were to take equipment and go on to private property, we would become responsible for anything that occurred? We very possibly could. I mean, obviously we could request indemnification from the property owners. Um, Attorney DeBona can probably attest to the fact that the town of Watertown if there's a future problem, we'll probably get sued. And we would also put ourselves in the position if we did it for this group of property owners, we would set the precedent to have to do it for any property owner that had flooding on their property? That's correct. Uh -uh. Through the chair, can I ask a question? Certainly. So um, there was some correspondence from the town um, to this family that came in and spoke at our last meeting. You know, uh, it, I, there was. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that correspondence. I know that Chuck Berger and Roy Cavanaugh spoke to those property owners. Um, we, we spent a lot of time going over this. Um, I did not write them a letter. Um, I wasn't asked to write them a letter. But was there an easement on the property that the town can go and, and clean out this area that, that could be affected? We, ha we have an easement that is actually to the west of that brook. It, there's a very small pipe that runs into the brook, but then there's a larger easement that runs parallel to the brook and the pipe that is of no impact on this issue. So I did go walk the property. Um, and, and I think I'm a little confused at how it was portrayed that the, the pipe runs under ordinary Joe's, but that, that was an existing pipe that ran under. That was something that was installed there before ordinary Joe's was built. Now, the pipe that I saw that was installed in the person's backyard um, obviously looked like it was installed by somebody there, an old homeowner. Um, I guess my thing is, is you know, couldn't we restore it back to the original way that it was? Well, again, the, the, the same issue exists. Everywhere someone has, I mean, you're absolutely right. That pipe was installed by a prior owner of that property in order to keep the water off the backyards right. to make his property salable. I mean, it, it's pretty- I guess I look at it as um, it, it's, it's a public safety issue with the amount of water that's coming out there. And so are we holding the homeowners responsible or are we gonna go and clean this trough out that originally we had an agreement with the original owner that we would maintain it? 
Well, we never had that agreement. We never had that. We never had any agreement with anyone that we would clean that pipe. I believe that's what the homeowner came with the other night was a, a piece of paper saying that there was an easement for us to go out and clean it. No, there's an easement, and we have a right to clean our easement. And we that is not the area that was designed. For that, that is easement? not the area where the where the the pipe is or the plugged pipe. I Can think we could probably find um, Rob in if we still have access to public works minutes, meeting minutes from when this was discussed many years ago. Yeah, I, I guess I'm I'm through the chair again. I yeah. guess I'm I'm concerned that we're going to ask this family or families to solve the issue here that. Um, is is really it's a it's a hazard to the to the people in Buckingham Street. But again, I mean, the, the issue because the issue is bigger because if we solve that water problem, how many other water problems do we have in town? I'm working on one right now on Sunset Avenue, where there's a a problem with some drainage through the backyards of some of the houses there, and each of those owners is putting up money to fix the problem. The so town of water see, is I, I, uh, town of water town is participating in that, but only to the extent of supplying materials. Right. I guess again through the chair I see that um, we're having flooding issues all over town that didn't exist in the past. Coming down between um, the Jeep dealership and Dunkin' Donuts, that didn't happen there yeah, five, did. ten years ago. It happened further down in front of H and R block. No, actually, uh, Dave Minnick, when he was chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission, tried to get the new owners of that dealership before they would get their license to sell cars to fix that flooding problem. And that, that flooding problem has existed for quite a while. Further down the street, not there. I, I, I beg to differ. 50 something years in town. I've never seen it that in front of that area. 67 years in town. Okay. Through the well, chair. I, I, um, just, I think it's wrong that we ask these homeowners to take and, the And this. Rob, don't get me wrong. I don't necessarily disagree with you, but the, the ramifications of doing that are widespread. Well, I guess have we looked out of the box and sit there and have we offered to, to purchase the property from these people? Oh, I, that I don't know. Purchase their homes? Purchase their home. If it's that much of an issue. Did, did the town of Watertown cause their problem? I, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know who put the pipe in, but obviously there was a pipe put in at some, some point. Right. And it, it was not the town of Watertown. Um, I believe Mr. Damaris would like to speak. Yes, um, I guess I guess I am echoing similar concerns, particularly with the Buckingham Street area. We saw um, serious flooding in that area during the most recent rainstorms there this year, um, and we've seen. You know, I have been in town 50 or 60 years, but 15 is my number of years, and I think that's long enough to have a good sample size of seeing how much more flooding there has been over the past year or so than there has been in previous years. There's been flooding issues that always will be, but the concern I have here is that this goes beyond just the effect on the homeowners, which we can all sympathize with, but this becomes something now where this water drains down Buckingham Street as a river, and I don't know if all of you have seen uh, either firsthand or video evidence of this water, this flood going down the, uh, the street, but it's like a river. Um, the concern I have is this problem could manifest more and more and then create larger hazards as you go down Buckingham to other properties, whether town-owned properties or public pro or private properties. Um, and as we know, Buckingham goes right down to Main Street in Oakville. So I have a bit of a concern here, and, and I think we all share this concern, of the larger issue of public safety and uh, the effect that this flooding here, or maybe in other places, but we're talking about this specific place, and what the town's responsibility for dealing with flooding issues that are going to affect more than just a handful of residents, 
it's going to affect people up and down Buckingham Street. Um, this one particular problem. So from uh, my perspective, I guess the question would be, does the town, let's say we, we know this problem exists, this problem is going on, and let's say we have further flooding down Buckingham Street, and it does property damage to private residents down the street, away from where most of all this, uh, the, the, the pipes and all of this are situated. Does the town bear responsibility, either legal responsibility or otherwise, uh, towards remedying this problem, or if there's damage there, would we be liable for any of that damage because we know there's a problem and we know that this problem it can cause this type of damage? I can only answer from the legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I would say that no, we don't have a legal responsibility for water that's passing between private properties through pipes that were put in by private property, pro uh, property owners. Mm -hmm. Um, so, no, and, and that becomes the problem. Once we undertake to, quote, unquote, fix this problem, now we may have responsibility if we can't repair it to the point where it doesn't fix the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, no one has done a study as to what it re would require to fix this problem. I have no idea how big the pipe under Ordinary Joe's is. Um, we know that the pipe going through the backyards is plugged and somewhat small. And in 2015, it was actually partially crushed. And I don't know if anybody has done anything to repair that. No. So, so in 2015, we had a very similar problem. And the homeowners, who are really the owners of that pipe, haven't done anything to fix it. it. Is it possible, I mean, we're talking about probably something that may be cost prohibitive for them to do so. Um, I don't know, and I haven't discussed this with them myself, um, whether or not they, how aware they were of these pipes and what they do on their particular property. Well, and and, I can and tell and you that in 2015, the they were, it was explained to them in no uncertain terms that that was their pipe, mm -hmm. and here's what they need to do in order to try to mitigate the problem. Did we have an estimate of the costs that they were given, or have any, anybody aware of whatever the costs were no. that they were told? Not that I'm aware of. And is it the same family? I'm sorry? Is it the same family? I, I, I can only speak for two of ah. them. The two of them are the same families, yes. Okay. I don't know. It seems to me that while well, you may have that you're, you're, you know, you're answering in terms of a legal scenario, I, I'm concerned about this from a different, perhaps, perspective. And our responsibility may not be a legal one, but maybe a, well, we're the government of the town of Watertown, and we may have a responsibility for public safety reasons to do something about this if the residents, even if the residents decide they don't want to. Let's say it was just, they, I, I don't care. I don't care if my house gets flooded out. I don't care if my yard gets flooded out. Do we allow that to continue? So let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. you, have, you take your leader drains, you bring them to your front yard, and you run them into the street. Mm -hmm. In the winter, you have a rainstorm, and it freezes and causes a public safety problem. Mm -hmm. Should the town of Watertown repair that problem? I mean, no. I mean, you're, you've done it. But we're I, talking so, about something uh, in a different order of magnitude here. We're well, talking about a little but bit But it's the of same ice. issue. It's really the same issue. But it's, it, it's like <clears throat> saying that oranges and apples are both fruits. They're both different types of fruits. We're talking about an issue where you have flooding that goes down the street. Well, that's that, what we'd be talking about if you put your leader drains large in. Large-scale flooding. That, that's my... Concern. My concern is on the public safety. And I understand side. that. And listen, I'm not yeah. here to oh, talk yeah, about no, the I'm moral not. right and wrong. Yeah. Um, I'm here to talk about the legal right and wrong. And I can tell you, you know, some of your options. One of your options is to try to fix the problem and lien the properties. I'm not sure who wants to do that either. I do believe we need to come up with some type of solution to this because the status quo is not going to be acceptable, particularly if, if uh, flooding continues to get worse in the area. Jeff, Anthony would like Go to ahead. speak. No, Paul, I, I want to say I agree with your analysis. This is a 
private property issue. I think your analogy makes sense too. And I think we should put this property on, on notice. Maybe record something on land records. I, I don't think it's something the town should undertake. Um, I think we have a major flooding issue on Main Street, right near Carvel. Every time we have a bad storm, yet we have not never sat as a council and said, well, we have a public safety issue. We've got to go behind all those properties and do something. I don't think we can go onto private property and solve every issue. As, especially when they are not caused by something that the town did. The town has gone in and fixed flooding issues where it's something that the town caused. Um, but I, you know, this is a, listen, <laughs> I, I don't mean to be cold and heartless here, and I know that's the way I look. Um, <laughs> no. But that's kind of what you pay me for. Um, I, you know, I'm here to protect the town from further liability. And this is an issue that is, it's a private water issue. We have several of them around town. Um, none of them come to your attention because they're not of the magnitude or on the order of magnitude of this one. Um, this one got worse because they didn't fix the, the crush pipes and then the pipes got full of stuff. So you've taken what perhaps could have been repaired, now you've filled the pipe with stuff and so the water goes right over the top of it. And that's exactly what's happening here. Sure. The chair. Go ahead, Rachel. Oh, Rachel. I, I just want to ask just, just a legal clarification. Um, you said a couple things, you know, if we fix it, we own it. Um, you know, there's, there's, these are really serious problems and then we could get sued. And then I think you didn't say ask the owners for identification. I think you said indemnification. Indemnification. And, yeah. So could you just give me an example of like what exactly that means? Like if we went on to the property, fixed it, and then um, it didn't go well or it flooded later or something, I'm assuming then the property owners could sue us for civil damages or something along those lines. Right. I, if, we, if we go to quote unquote fix the problem and it doesn't work, who are the, who are the residents going to sue? Mm -hmm. They're going to sue the people with the deep pockets, which is the town of Watertown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, you, you mentioned indemnification. We can seek an indemnification from these property owners. And can you explain what that term means? The indemnification means that they would hold us harmless okay, from any lawsuit, okay. which is if it's not backed up by anything, it's not worth much. Okay. It's kind of like um, you know a pauper giving you an indemnification for anything you do for him mm -hmm. or her. The other thing that Bob Cram pre mentioned um, in our last meeting was that the pipe under Ordinary Joe's is so large that it could be like seriously life threatening. Um, as well. That was my impression of what he said, that if it all rushed out at once, that it could be like a really serious problem. I, I, I can't speak to that. I will tell you that all of these pipes, or this pipe, ends up in a state um, collection area. Um, and in the past, in 2015, we had the state go and inspect that collection, whatever it is. It's some kind of a uh, structure in the ground where the water is supposed to collect and get distributed. Um, you know, the problem now is it's not even getting there. It's, it's going over the top of the ground. That's why it goes into the street. Can I did just, you want just, yeah, quickly through the chair. Paul, the, the sunset, is that the street you referred to earlier? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sunset. What, could you explain to me one more time what the actual solution was? They kind of have a minor um, problem with some drainage to their backyards. And what the town of Watertown said they would do is just supply materials to them. And they are paying to have the project done. In fact, I'm collecting the money um, 
myself so that we have the money at the end of the project to pay for it. I want we, we asked to get the money up front. And, and that clearly won't work on Buckingham I'm sorry? Street. That won't work on Buckingham Street, that no. type of, no. Well, I, we could offer to do materials, but materials aren't the problem. I, I think we have a design issue. I think we probably have a requirement for perhaps a bigger pipe. Um, you know, I don't know what the issues are. I mean, I have emails from the state of Connecticut. There are uh, twin 8-inch pipes and twin 15-inch pipes uh, that take some of this water from the ordinary Joe's area away. Uh, the person from the state opined back in 2015 that perhaps those pipes, those pipes are beginning to fail. So maybe we can visit some of this at the state. Um, but, th but again, they have inspected those facilities um, and found them not to be a problem. Through the chair, yeah, could I have a clarification? The, the Sunset Grill, it's not a, it's not a, a direct comparison. No, sorry, not Sunset Grill, Sunset um, Sunset Street. Avenue, it's not yes. a direct comparison, you're right. Right, right. Um, because that water is coming down off of like Middlebury Road and other properties and, and, right. and it's not a pipe in like the owner's backyard. And so it, the owners on Sunset are not responsible for where that water's coming from. So it's a little bit of a different. Well, but keep in mind that the law of water is kind of odd. <laughs> and go, if go. your water is, excuse me, if your property is below the property of your neighbor and water runs off your neighbor's property and into yours, that's not their problem. That's your problem. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, and you'd like to say, well, their water is running onto my property. I want them to do something about it. They're not required to do so, so long as that's the natural flow of the water. Um, it's clear that whoever owned this property in the dark ages, and I do mean the dark ages, because this is back in the very early 1900s, put a pipe in in order to make this property salable. One, one more quick question. There was, a, there was an issue a few years back up on Guernsey Town Road where they had all kinds of water problems in their backyards. It would be the, I guess, west side across from the Watertown Golf Club. That whole stretch of road, those houses took on water every time we got heavy rain. And I think it was during, they might have rebuilt the whole road, Guernsey Town Road at the time, and they had put in all new sewer lines oh. in to solve that problem for the neighbors that had water in their backyards. Do you recall who took care of that? I, I don't, I, I, but I, um, it's funny because I was on the town council. Um, matter of fact, I was chairman of the town council just at the end of the Guernsey Town Road rebuilding project. Um, it wasn't done to solve a water problem. It was done to fix what is a major thoroughfare fair in town. If, as part of that, they managed to put some drainage in, I, I, don't, I don't think what we did in Guernsey Town Road did much for those properties because the water's in the back of those properties, not in the front. Right. Okay, let's move Thank on you. to the agenda, please. Thank you, Attorney Jessel. Are we ready? We're ready. <clears throat> I move to approve the appropriation in the amount of $17,075 for fencing for the Watertown Dog Park to be appropriated as from the following accounts. $12,984.56 from the J. Staver Endowment Fund and $6,500 from the Park and Rex Park Development Trust Fund. Is there a second? I second it. Does anyone have any questions? Through the chair. Yes. <clears throat> I, I just have a, a question um, for Lisa, if, if possible, just about why you chose the, the um, fence company that we normally use as opposed to the other one that was a little bit lower, the one from New York. Just tap it. The little person speaking. Right, I'm just going to speak. Um, the fence company that we normally do business with was around 4000 More? 
then mm -hmm. the lowest bid, which is a company out of Brewster, mm -hmm. um, the company that is in Connecticut and has done Deland Field and Veterans Park and Crestbrook and Winnemag and to different areas, um, probably some of the school department stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, I just felt a lot more confident using a company that we've been using all along. So that's why. Okay. It still would have been short. Mm -hmm. so, and that's right. what had to be explained here. The bids came in and we had a special meeting last Tuesday with the Park and Rec Commission um, to get it here to you for today. Um, the concern was is they're holding these quotes now, like this one is for 30 days, but a lot of places mm -hmm. it's only 14 days now because of the lack of product and just everything escalating. So. Is that why the prices vary so much? I was just surprised. It's, it's incredible. To look. That's why I included the quotes. I mean, yeah. it's like they're all over the place. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor of approving the funds, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Or abstaining? The Thank motion you. passes unanimously. I move to authorize an appropriation from the general fund in the amount of $9,500 for consulting services for the preparation and public presentation of the safety improvement concept plan for Main Street. Do we have a second? Second. Would you uh, comment, sir? So since not all members have been sitting while we started the RSA program, I'm going to give you a little background on the RSA so everybody's on the same page. So the town of Watertown conducted a Connecticut DOT road safety audit, uh, commonly referred to as an RSA, for Main Street from Route 6 south to French Street. The Connecticut DOT conducted this audit at the request of the Board of Police Commissioners following the unfortunate fatalities on Main Street. The state had already done an audit at no cost to the town on Bunker Hill Road, and while that state funded only one study per town, the Connecticut DOT conducted this second study at the direction of the state commissioner. The results of the RSA identify near-term and long-term recommendations for improving operations and safety along Main Street with an eye toward pedestrian safety. The range of improvements include replacing street trees, making handicap ramps ADA accessible, reducing signage clutter, repairing traffic control signal push buttons, completing gaps in the sidewalk system, and many other low uh, hanging type fruit items that we could take care of. Uh, many of these recommendations have already been implemented by Public Works or others. The purpose of the RSA is to make a holistic assessment of the corridor and to garner early Connecticut DOT support in regards to the necessary improvements, which is very important to us at this juncture. Long-term improvements consider items such as right turn lane at the Old Town Hall, heading south along the green. Perhaps more meaningful improvements included development concept alternatives to make Main Street a complete street. Providing for traffic calming along with enhanced pedestrian and bicycle safety. Uh, that would give us a more improved operations down and along Main Street. The need for a signal head facing the gas station opposite Woodruff Street was identified along with the need for a sidewalk from Woodruff Street to Starbucks along the west side of Main Street. Subsequent to the RSA, the town hired Malone and McBroom Incorporated to develop alternatives that vetted a number of ideas, including removing parking, angled parking, raised bump outs, flat, uh, flush bump outs, and rapid rectangular flashing beacons. A preferred alternative was identified by the Main Street Committee and vetted with town staff and the police. While the plan includes a number of improvements, potential funding sources were identified by the town for implementation of select improvements. The town hired Weston and Sampson to design um, the flashing beacons for the crosswalk at Red Door and at the Rock Garden. The signals have been designed but not yet approved by DOT. The town sought a proposal from Malone and McBroom to design the signal plan for Woodruff Avenue. The Department of Public Works engaged in its own forces for survey and design of the sidewalk from Woodruff Street to Starbucks along St. John's School. The town applied successfully to the state for a steep grant. Um, if you remember, we allocated $256,000 into a line item. Uh, that would be a 50% match and a 50% reimbursement by the state when we start the project. 
While the town bundled the various tasks, the condition of the steep grant approval is that the work, sidewalk, uh, flashing beacons, and traffic signals must be sent out to bid and constructed as a single project. <clears throat> the town also conducted a meeting with Connecticut DOT and uh, the Naugatuck Valley COG Association to discuss potential funding. Connecticut DOT's commissioners attended the meeting and drove down Main Street um, with members of our planning and zoning and police department. While no commitment was made, all present agreed that the master plan, plan would qualify for future state funding. Uh, likely through their load SIP um, program, that state money to the town would support from COG, pays for construction but not design, or the federal transportation alternatives funding, which is state money to the town and administered by DOT and uh, COG, helps set the funding priority with other towns in the region. Uh, it's usually an 80-20% match. In either case, a successful grant application would typically include public support for the project. So basically we're asking for this $9,500 to have um, uh, McBroom make a presentation presented to the public so that we have that um, process already in place. As the monies become available, it'll give us a better placement and we'll be ready to move forward to go after those uh, grant matching funds. Okay, anyone have any questions? So th this is going to this is going to allow us to more quickly get access to those funds. That's going to that's correct. It's going to put us in a position that we can um, articulate that we went out to the public, we talked about these improvements, and we can move forward with our plan uh, without having to wait for this portion of that. We're get, basically getting ahead of the game. You have a question? The, yeah. the SLR, the, is that the new name? Because Milo and Mc, McBroom, did they change their name? They did, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, the, you have another question? I think Mr. Mickle had a question directly. It's okay. Okay, well, I have that question. Why did we choose um, SLR? That's what we had all along. This was... Um, this was put into place prior to me taking this position. Uh, Mr. Cavanaugh had started this alignment and had asked for quotes. Um, SLR, which was past McBroom, um, Mc, I'm sorry, I can't remember the first name or the last name of the other name. Um, they've done a lot for, town, for our town. They know the project, and I think that's the best bet for us to um, continue to have these projects to move forward. Anything else? Um, I, I just quick through the chair. Um, could you just clarify for me? I just want to be sure I'm clear on this. The $9,500 is for the presentation. Uh, what? Uh, can you explain what that presentation is? Just for my satisfaction, so make sure. sure I'm clear on it. Sure. So when we put the uh, RSA committee in place, they went through. They did a walk through with, mm -hmm. all, you know, all the partners. They did um, potential design concepts for the main street. Um, they did some um, light architectural, architectural reviews for that. Um, so those items are conceptual at the moment. Right. And the, I, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. What was your original question? The, for, for the, what, the, what this presentation is, is this something where they've taken all of this work and they're going to put it together into a formal presentation for, I presume, the town council or to the public in general? Is that yes, thank you for summarizing where okay. I was trying I, I to wanted go. To be sure I had that right, okay. Um, but yes, it would be presented to the general public. So, we, you know, our stakeholder partners up on Main Street, the business owners, it's very important that they have some input as to what's gonna go on in the Main Street. Yes, no, I would understand that. I just, the, the one thing, if we're going to be allocating $9,500, um, are we ensuring that this plan will be going to effect, or are we just going to say, here's $9,500, you know, knock our socks off, you know? Well, I don't think there's any way to guarantee that the grant <laughs> funds will yeah, be given to I us. I would imagine so, but I mean, I'm just, again, I'm you know, just making sure I sure. have a clarification on it. Um, I yeah. think that this group in it itself has done a number of projects um, with conversations that I've had with COG and the amount of uh, funds that are becoming available. I mean, it, I'm sold 100% that we should move forward with a project like this so that we're best positioned to uh, be eligible for those grants. All right, thank you. You're welcome. 
All those in favor of approving the $9,500, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? The motion passes unanimously. I move to authorize an appropriation from the general fund in the amount of $28,550 for repairs to the Watertown Animal Shelter. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Um, Chief, if you would be so kind. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman, members of the Town Council. Uh, the Watertown Animal Control Facility, located on Old Baird Road, uh, is a town-owned and maintained building. Uh, we board there our dogs and cats uh, that we take possession of through uh, various different circumstances. On July 2nd, the Department of Agriculture inspected the uh, facility and failed us. And I'll read what their uh, findings were. Uh, physical requirements. They found cracks in the troughs that need to be filled or repaired to allow for the proper disinfection. Uh, they need to we need to repair or replace the broken latches and rust on the kennel doors. The flooring in the kennel areas need to be sealed or painted in a way to be made water impervious to allow for proper uh, disinfection. Rust and cracks on beams in the outdoor kennel area need to be replaced or repaired and the cracks in the walls of the outdoor kennel areas need to be filled or repaired in a way to be made water impervious to allow for proper disinfection. Uh, since that time, we have been obtaining quotes uh, from various different companies uh, that we brought in to determine what the best solution would be to solve this problem. Uh, all the companies that we brought in for the flooring uh, gave us the same answer and that is that the entire uh, concrete flooring needs to be diamond ground. About an eighth inch of concrete needs to be taken off to create a proper um, uh, surface for the epoxy finish to be put onto. That the current concrete that's exposed uh, is aged and pitted and cracked in many places and that the uh, epoxy paint that needs to get uh, put on there to make the concrete sealed and impervious uh, will not adhere to the concrete the way it is now without prepping uh, all the concrete uh, there. The lowest quote that we have received for that work is $23,000 to both grind the concrete floor and apply all the proper coatings uh, so that it has a, a, a finished product. Uh, secondly, the um, fencing, all the kennel doors, latches, and fencing that's inside the building. Uh, the latches uh, weren't working correctly and keeping the doors secured. And all the fencing, the actual uh, chain link itself was rusty. Uh, and that all needs to be removed and replaced. Uh, we did receive a quote uh, with the fencing of $2,200 to replace all the interior latches and actual chain link. Uh, there is an additional $3,300 uh, item that's built into the fencing here that would complete a additional 90 linear feet of six foot high chain link fence on the exterior of the building. Uh, which would finally finish the, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen this building, but there's kind of a front yard to it. Uh, it's about half fenced in right now. Uh, it's the animal control officer would like to finish that fencing so that we had a completely fenced in area there that the dogs could be let out of the actual kennel and be allowed to get some fresh air and actually stretch their legs and run around a little bit. Uh, it should be noted that that uh, is $3,300 and was not part of what failed us on the uh, inspection. It simply is a uh, the wish of the animal control officer that these dogs should be able to get out and actually move around. Uh, that total for the fencing work would be $5,500 for a total of 
28,550. Um, there are several other issues coming down the road with the animal control facility. Uh, one is HVAC. Uh, we've been monitoring temperatures in the building over the course of the summer and in some of our very hot days. Uh, the temperatures inside that building soared into the upper 80s, uh, which for uh, pets, especially with long-haired dogs, uh, it was very hot in there. And it is recommended that uh, air conditioning be installed, and we are looking into doing that with funds that the town already has and a donated fund account. Uh, we'll be looking into that in the spring to have that work done. Uh, also, the roof on the building is getting older. Uh, it was only a 20-year roof that appears to be on there, and we're about 15 years or so into that roof. Uh, the uh, contractor that we brought in uh, to look at the roof is recommending an overlay uh, at about a six to $7,000 cost. Uh, we do plan on budgeting for that money uh, through the purchasing department in our next year's budget. Um, lastly, the electrical uh, box that's in the building uh, we've had uh, some rodent issues in the building that we've been addressing, but rodents did get into our uh, circuit breaker panel. Uh, we've had to take many nests out of there, and we do have some wires partially chewed. Uh, when we do the HVAC work, we're also going to be looking at about three to $4,000 of electrical work to fix our electrical panel back up and, and upgrade that panel to allow for the air conditioning system to be put in. So... Um, just advising the, the council that there's going to be some more work down the road for that building. But uh, at this time, just to get this uh, inspection passed, uh, they're going to be back to reinspect in mid-December. Uh, we're hoping to have the work done by then if the, the council agrees. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anyone? Anyone? Do you, do you happen to have uh, who the lowest bidder was? The lowest bidder on the flooring is Engineered Coatings Incorporated. Uh, the other two companies that bid was Global Garage Flooring and Design and Little City Industries, LLC. Uh, the other two quotes that we had uh, from Global was $27,910 and from Little City Industries of $32,000. $574. Anyone else? Do the chair. Yes. I have a question. Um, uh, since you said this is a town building, and I don't know if it falls under the public buildings or, or the police department to, to maintain it, but I'm just <coughs> sort of wondering how it might have gotten to this situation. Um, deferred maintenance or just what, how, 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 it, how it got to be a point where it failed. Uh, quite honestly, I don't know when ever this building was ever inspected before. Uh, mm -hmm. The Department of Agriculture has some oversight over our animal control function, mm -hmm. uh, and they chose to come do an inspection, uh, why it passed years prior, and suddenly it's no longer passing with really having no difference in physical design or, or structure. I can't answer that question. I don't know. But the inspector that did come out this time uh, said it wasn't going to pass. Thank you. Yep. Anyone? Through the chair? Yes. Chief, uh, I've noticed that other municipalities in the state have had mm -hmm. similar such problems. Wallingford, for example, mm -hmm. they were mandated and fast told they had to get air conditioning for the animals, which they did. Woke it to do over their whole facility. And I could recall that the main mission of your animal control division in the past and currently now is the humane treatment of any animals that come into the possession mm -hmm. and the control of the PD. And I would say this wouldn't be also a workplace issue. Don't you have a full-time animal control officer and a part-timer? They spend a majority of their time there. Mm -hmm. There's an office to do reports. Yes, there and is. Our, our animal control officers do spend some time up there. Uh, and, and, and it did get warm. On those really hot days, especially on the heat waves where there were consecutive days of, of heat and where the nights just didn't cool off enough to really get the heat out of the building. Um, the heat really did build up in there. It is a concrete building and, and it does, it can get hot. Okay. Um, can I ask a question? Certainly. Thank you. Um, has, has, I, I don't know about the rules and regulations as far as each town having to have their own 
uh, kennel mm -hmm. uh, per se, but is this something that should be researched and looking to uh, maybe get in with other towns and, and building a facility so eventually it would be cheaper for the community and maybe regionalize a, um, a dog pound? Um, I, I, I guess that's my question to you. Has that ever been looked at? That you yes, know a terrific question, and the answer to that is yes, it has. Uh, and and um, the most recent time I can recall was about 10 years ago where the Naugatuck Valley COG uh, did funded a pretty large study where all the area municipalities, and I'm not positive if Watertown was involved in that at the time or not, but funded a study to have many of the municipalities in the greater Waterbury area uh, come together uh, to regionalize a dog pound. Um, now, keep in mind that does not regionalize the animal control function. It regionalizes only the pound itself, which means simply the building where the animals are boarded. Um, once you build a building, it needs to be maintained. You have utility costs. It needs to be staffed. Um, you'd have animals coming there from many different municipalities, so you would have to have full-time and part-time staff to handle the uh, care and cleaning of the building. And then each municipality is still responsible for their actual animal control function, which means we would still need to have animal control officers in the town of Watertown to respond to complaints and handle the investigations and enforcement action. Uh, it was found during that study that there was very little if any cost savings to the municipalities because the cost of both constructing this building and then the ongoing cost of staffing and maintaining the building were more money than most municipalities were putting out to handle their own animal control um, budget at the time. So it had been looked into and it was simply one of those situations where cost savings did not materialize. Are you a member of the COG? The water Watertown itself is, yes. Is, yep. I would just think that should be something that gets looked into again, you know, with, because I'm sure, you know, you have 1.5 FTEs and, you know, I look around to the other towns, if they have the same, there mm -hmm. has to be some type of savings there. But Yeah, some, should be some should communities be have banded together, and I'm thinking particularly in the Amity region, to regionalize the animal control function where they all share and animal control officer uh, for, for several different communities. Um, you know, we're, we're a town that's grown to nearly 25,000 people here, yep. you know, and then the towns of uh, Orange, Woodbridge, and Bethany are much smaller in size, and, you know, add all their populations together. Um, you know, it's not too much more than what we have for a population here already, so a um, little different in scale. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Um, I have a question, Chief. When this work is being done to the floor, um, it would sound like maybe the animals that we currently would house would have to be moved out. Yes, I would imagine that's correct. Right. Um, would you be talking to Thomaston or somewhere close by to house? Yes, uh, our animal control officer has mutual aid agreements set up with the surrounding communities, including Waterbury. Right. Uh, which could take our which could take our animals temporarily. So we'd be able to project to them when when we needed that to occur. Correct. Okay. Now those arrangements are already in place in the event we ever do get an infectious disease to enter our facility that we would have to vacate and disinfect. Would work. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? The motion passes unanimously. I move to approve the Town of Watertown organizational chart as presented. Is there a second? Second. I think the town manager has already reviewed it for us. Are there any further questions? I, I think it's a good idea, as uh, Mr. Mickle said, to add the date mm -hmm. or last updated. Just a comment I have on that. Yeah. It's a good idea to add the date, very definitely. All those in favor of the organizational chart with the date added, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion passes unanimously.
I move to approve the resolution authorizing an appropriation in the amount of $20,830 for tax refunds. Is there a second? Second. Anyone have any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the tax refunds, please say aye. 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 I move to approve the resolution authorizing tax refunds. Is there a second? Second. second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution, please say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Motion is unanimous. We are adjourned. It was canceled. Recording stop. I didn't send you one because you were away. Oh, okay. okay. Um, there